Well, good morning. Um, it is Friday, August 7th, and um, I appreciate you being with me this morning. Obviously, I'm not Pastor Josh. I asked if I would be able to uh, take today because I do need to share with you some sad news, and that is Bill Pletta died yesterday. Uh, he and Jimmy had been up in Virginia. Um, he had been hospitalized due to coronavirus and um, passed away yesterday. So our thoughts and prayers go with Jimmy, their daughter, Leslie Pletta smith who plays in our bell choir, and Tim, her husband, as well as their son, Brian, who was um, making his way back from the West Coast or out West. Um, so, so today's reading uh, is from the Book of Romans, and this is chapter 8, I get to it. So this is Paul's letter to the church in Rome, um, chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, Will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor ruler, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. During this time of pandemic, um, things have changed radically. And one of those things is the necessary precautions that hospitals are taking and uh, not allowing visitors um, almost across the board and certainly those with coronavirus, it's exceedingly limited. I was talking with a, a colleague of mine who's a chaplain at a local um, nursing or, or hospital system saying that even chaplains are not able to do visitation uh, at, at an end of life um, situation, um, depends on the hospital and depends on their, their policies they may or may not allow for any uh, in-person visitation. What doctors, nurses, staffs have done and tried their best to do is still make connections with families. Sometimes that's through video phone, sometimes that's through a phone, uh, iPad, um, but it's vastly different and depending on one's circumstances that may or may not be a possibility. Um, so that brings a different dynamic to what's already a very painful situation, uh, both for families and for friends and those who love them. So our care and our comfort, our, our expressions of grief and consolation are done in a different um, way. And yesterday in talking with Jimmy and Leslie uh, on the phone, I, it, it struck me that a lot of my ministry at times such as this is just simply being present and being with a family, if they'd like to talk, to listen as long as they'd like to speak, uh, if they'd like to sit in silence, to just be present in a room with somebody, to offer a nod of affirmation. So it's very awkward to do that over the phone. Uh, it's, um, I assured Jimmy that when things get back to a place where we can gather, where we can hug, where we can um, be with one another, that we would um, certainly 
be open to anything the family would like to do in, in, in way of remembering Bill. One resource that we have in our traditional the liturgical tradition um, is this book of occasional services. And, and when um, it became, when, when, when Billy was notified, or Bill was, no, when Jimmy was notified um, that they would be removing the vent, um, although I didn't get to put this into practice with her or, or with Bill, I did go to the office and pick it up and read through the service or this brief um, rite, if you will. It's entitled, When Life Sustaining Care is Ended. And one of the prayers there is, God of compassion and love, you have breathed into us the breath of life and have given us the exercise of our minds and wills. In our frailty, we place our lives into your hands, trusting into your never-failing promises through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And another prayer that can be offered. O oh God, our creator and sustainer, receive our prayers for Bill. We thank you for the gifts of love and companionship shared with him. Give us grace now to accept our limitations as we commend Bill to your merciful care. Strengthen us in this time of trial and help us to continue to serve and care for one another through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. There's also a ritual called the commendation of the dying. And one of the prayers there um, is this one. Almighty God, Look on Bill, whom you made your child in baptism. Comfort him with the promise of life with all your saints, the promise made sure by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This day, I, I don't know um, what Jimmy's travel plans are, um, so to send cards. Uh, I don't know yet to encourage you to do that to their local address here or whether up in Virginia. Um, as I get that information, I'll share that with you. Um, I thought today um, to do something different is for us to join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. as we remember and give thanks for Bill's life, as we uh, remember and hold close in our hearts, Jimmy and Leslie and Brian and all their friends and loved ones. So I invite you now to join me in praying the traditional version of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, God's peace be with you. And I will see you tomorrow.